The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. It's new, it's unique, it's Gildy's own invention. It's Gildy's Blade, the amazing new double-edged knife spatula you first heard about on this program last week. It's a full $2 value that Parquet Margin offers you at a sensational bargain. Hear all about it. Have pencil and paper ready for our next announcement. Meanwhile, remember, Parquet Margarine is the margarine millions prefer because it tastes so good. And it tastes so good because it's always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Well, it's Saturday night, and the great Gildersleeve has been double dating with his niece Marjorie and her betrothed Bronco Thompson. The water commissioner is happiest when he's with his nearest and dearest. And he's in the back, nearest his dearest. Uh, it's been a nice evening, Catherine. Yes, I hate to see it end. Look up in front. Marjorie and Bronco have forgotten we're here. When I was a boy, I never sat that close to a girl in a car. You didn't? No, the gear shift was always in the way. <laughs> <laughs> I envy Marjorie and Bronco. They're so in love with a honeymoon just around the corner. Yeah, and a new Hudson to turn the corner in. <laughs> <laughs> honeymoon. Da, da, dee, 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 dee. Ask them to get some music on the radio, Throckmorton. Good idea. Bronco! Oh, Bronco! They're a million miles away. They are? Bronco! Oh, did you call me, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what do you want, Unky? How about turning on the radio? We'll all sing. I'll turn on the radio, but I can't sing, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, yes, he can, Unky. Bronco has a nice voice. Oh, Marge. Oh, there's no tomorrow. I love that. Yeah, me too. Mm, now is forever when love is true. Finish it, Bronco. Well, so kiss me and hold me tight. There's no tomorrow. There's just tonight. Yeah, he finished it. <laughs> Gosh, wasn't that terrible? Uh, maybe I'd better take it, Bronco. Never send a boy to do a man's work. There's no tomorrow when love is new. Now is forever when love is true. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> so kiss me and hold me tight. There's no tomorrow, there's just tonight. Lovely, Yankee. You ought to be in a nightclub. Nightclub? Sure, like Tony Martin. Now, Bronco. Here's your house, Miss Milford. Shall I let you out first? Please, Bronco. It's been nice having you with us, Miss Milford. Yeah, nice. Thank you, Marjorie. I had a wonderful evening, Bronco. Good night, Miss Milford. Good night. I'll be back in a minute, children. So kiss me and hold me tight. Uh, Catherine? Yes? So kiss me and hold me tight. <laughs> oh, Throckmorton, not here at the door. They'd see us. Well, they wouldn't see us if we got on the other side of the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Besides, I can't invite you in. Mother has a bow. Oh, that's... A bow? Your mother? Mm-hmm. A Mr. Oberdorf from Idaho. Oh? She met him at a square dance. They're too cute for words. Yeah, I'll bet. Well, you mind if I shake your hand? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> what a way to say goodnight. <laughs> Well, here we are. My 
Hi, George. Nice to have been out with you and Marjorie tonight, Bronco. We were glad to have you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Still a little chilly out. I didn't notice it. Yeah, no, I guess you didn't. <laughs> you didn't notice anything but me, did you, Bronco, baby? <laughs> what a baby. Six foot two and eyes of blue. Unky, take Bronco into the parlor while I go make some hot chocolate. I'll be right with you. Yeah, that tastes good. Come along, baby. Uh, I mean, Bronco. Oh, Marjorie's a great little girl, Mr. Gildersleeve. A great little girl. Well, she thinks you're pretty nice, too, Bronco. I'm glad to see you two so much in love. Yes, sir. Love is great. Really great. I can hardly wait until May 10th. Yeah. You know, Bronco, I'm very proud of you and Marjorie. You're the happiest two people I know. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, you're not happy, are you? What? Have you ever thought about getting married and being happy? Me? Think what a different man you'd be if you were married to a woman. It, woman? <laughs> yeah, Miss Milford, for example. Now, wait a minute, Bronco. Mr. Gildersleeve, marriage is a wonderful institution. How do you know? You haven't been committed yet. <laughs> no, sir, but I'm sold on the idea. Yeah, I can see that. Well, there's more to life than just living. A very profound statement. Living alone, I mean. Mr. Gildersleeve, it was not intended for man to live alone. Man is not a solitary creature. Oh? Sit down, Mr. Gildersleeve. I want to talk to you. Yes, yes. Yeah. There are some things I think you ought to know about life. Now, Bronco, if this has anything to do with the birds and bees, I know all about them. <laughs> the chocolate will be ready in a few minutes. Have you two found anything interesting to talk about? No. I've been trying to talk your uncle into getting married. Oh, I think it's a wonderful idea, Anki. Marjorie. But you've been single too long. Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve. It's later than you think. You said it. <laughs> 12.30 and I'm going to bed. Good night. <laughs> Why is it when two people are about to get married, they always try to hook somebody else? <laughs> No, I don't think I'll get to sleep for quite a while. Well, may I come in? Yes, my dear. Come in. I'm just reading. Oh, what you reading, Anki? Live alone and like it. <laughs> Bronco and I didn't mean to chase you out of the living room. Oh, that's all right. But really, Uncle Mort, I've worried a lot about how you'll get along when I leave. Well, that's nice of you, Marjorie, but... I'd feel a lot better if you had a good wife to take care of you. Marjorie, let's not get carried away. If you don't decide to take a wife the way you go down and buy a cigar... Besides, there are other people around here to consider. Little Leroy would never accept another woman in this house. And Bertie wouldn't like anybody puttering around her kitchen. Uncle Mort, you're just making excuses. All right, but... Unky, look me in the eye. Huh? Now tell me honestly, wouldn't you like to have a pretty girl like Miss Milford welcome you home from the office and get your slippers and kiss your cares away? <sighs> wouldn't be bad. <laughs> Oh, good morning, Bertie. Morning, Miss Gillsleeve. How are you this morning? I didn't sleep very well. Somebody put a bug in my ear. Come again? It kept buzzing all night. What you say? Never mind, Bertie. Yes, sir. I'll get you breakfast, Miss Gillsleeve. Hi, Unc! Leroy, quiet. You wake up Marjorie. Isn't she up yet? No, and she needs her beauty sleep, my boy. Oh, for corn's sake. She's lovely. She's engaged. She needs her beauty sleep. No, Leroy. Why does she need beauty sleep? She's already got them hooked. <laughs> Leroy, let's be a bit considerate. We won't have Marjorie very much longer, you know. Yeah. Gosh, it's going to seem funny around here without Marge. Yeah, we're going to miss her, my boy. It'll be just you and me and Bertie. Hey, Unc, why don't you get a rumor? A rumor? Well, Marjorie and I were talking about that last night, after a fashion. That'd be keen. Leroy... You wouldn't want Miss Milford, I mean, a rumor living here, would you? Why not? What's this about Miss Milford? <laughs> well, my boy, you wouldn't want her to come to live with us, would you? Oh, boy, would I? She's a nurse. She could sign all my sick slips and get me out of school. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds much too good. There must be something wrong with this arrangement. Yeah, 
Yeah, I thought I might as well finish up the eggs and the pancakes and the bacon. Yes, sir. <laughs> Fine breakfast, Bertie. Thank you, sir. Uh, Miss Gilsley? Yes, Bertie? Uh, what's this rumor I hear about a rumor? Well, uh, <laughs> really nothing to it, Bertie. Marjorie just seemed to think after she leaves, we should invite somebody to join our little family. Yes, sir. Leroy said that somebody lobbed him Miss Milford. He did, eh? <laughs> That's the strangest way I ever heard of to get a rumor. Marry him. <laughs> now, Bertie, I haven't said anything about getting married. You wouldn't want somebody else puttering around your kitchen. Who said I would? But, uh, Bertie's pretty big, but there's room in her kitchen for a nice girl like Miss Milford. I'd put the welcome mat right at the kitchen door. Well, Bertie. Yes, sir. Bertie likes that kind of helping. She'd put the welcome mat right at the kitchen door. All right, Miss Bertie. Miss Gilsey, you know what Bertie'd do if you married Miss Milford? Yes, Bertie. That's right. Bertie'd put the welcome mat right at the kitchen door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I'll take to my couch. <laughs> Uh, I don't know why, but I've got the feeling people are trying to push me into something. <sighs> Feels good. Hmm. Cobwebs on the ceiling. <laughs> All this talk about marital bliss. Those vine-covered cottages have a lot of thorns, too. <laughs> <sighs> Didn't get nearly enough sleep last night. Ate too much breakfast, too. Wonder if Catherine would get my slippers. <sighs> little wife has dinner ready. Catherine, I'm home. Doc Morton, baby. Baby. <laughs> Go right into the living room and take off your shoes. Bye. I have your slippers ready. You have? Oh, you must be awfully tired. Sit down, baby. <laughs> now sit here on the arm of your chair and run my fingers through your hair. <sighs> Feels good. You don't mind waiting a while for dinner, do you? Nah, just had a lot of bacon and eggs. <laughs> ah, this is a lie. Did my water commissioner have a busy day at the office? Yeah, turning it on and cutting it off all day. <laughs> oh, my poor boy. You have a big worry wrinkle across your forehead. Let Catherine kiss your cares away. Yeah. Glad I came home early. Uh, Catherine? Yes, baby? There's another wrinkle under my nose. Well, I'll kiss that away, too. <laughs> Zeke! Mr. Gilsley! Mr. Gilsley! What's that? What you for? Mr. Gilsley! Bertie, what happened? You fell off the couch. I did? You was dreaming. Yeah, I guess I was. You believe in dreams, Miss Gilsley? Well, not ordinarily, Bertie, but by George, I believe in that one. <laughs> Back to the great Gildersleeve and his plans in just a minute. Now, here's the news about Gildy's Blade, Parquet Margarine's record-smashing bargain offer. You've never had a chance to buy a kitchen implement like this before. It's new, really new, invented by the great Gildersleeve himself. It's more than a knife, more than a spatula. It's two fine kitchen knives and a spatula all in one. That's right. Basically, this knife spatula of Gildy's is a big, flat, flexible blade of mirror-finished stainless spring steel, an inch and a quarter wide, seven inches long. It's set in a polished imported rosewood handle, almost five inches long. Overall length is just under a foot, about the length of your favorite bread knife. Now, one edge of Gildy's blade is a lifetime serrated edge that never needs sharpening. That makes this knife spatula a superb knife for slicing bread, cake, fruits, vegetables, anything you want to slice without crushing. And the other edge of the blade is hand-honed, razor-keen, straight-edged. A big, all-purpose knife for any kind of cutting and slicing. 
Yes, two edges for the same blade, two fine kitchen knives in one. And then, in addition, the wide, flat, springy blade is spatula-shaped, turns pancakes, fried eggs, fried potatoes, scrapes, mixes, and that makes three implements in one, two fine kitchen knives and a spatula all in one handle. Of course, you'll want one. If you could buy one in the store, it would have to cost at least $2. But you can have this wonderful knife spatula called Gildy's Blade, manufactured especially for Gildersleeve by K-Lan, famous makers of fine cutlery. You can have it for only 50 cents, plus the red end flap of a package of parquet margarine and the label or wrapper from any loaf of bread your grocer sells. In some states, you may have to use the side panel of the parquet carton that shows the four yellow quarters. Now remember, just send your half dollar, the red end flap or side panel from a parquet package, and your bread label or wrapper to Kraft Foods Company, Box 5939, Chicago 77, Illinois. That's the full address. Kraft Foods Company, Box 5939, Chicago 77, Illinois. Be sure to include your own name and address for return mailing. And get your order in promptly. This offer is for a limited time only. Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. On Sunday, he decided that if marriage is good enough for Marjorie and Bronco, it's good enough for him. He's of the same opinion on Monday morning. Well, children, I guess I'll be off to the office. Don't you want the morning mail, Unky? Oh, yes. Where is it? I put it in your hat. Oh, glad you told me. I might have worn the mail to work. <laughs> <laughs> Lero. <laughs> Let's see what we have here. Well, our Easter seals to help the crippled children. Oh, let's see what they're like this year. I've seen them. There's a picture of a little kid getting well and throwing his crutches away. Well, that's what happens when everybody buys Easter seals, Leroy. That's where the money comes from to help handicapped children. Think I'll get some more to put on all my water bills. Oh, gee, that's a wonderful idea, Anki. Yeah, here's another letter from Mr. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Wonder how it'd be to get letters addressed to Mr. and Mrs. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. What's this, Uncle Mort? Huh? Eh? Well, my dear, you gave me a lot to think about the other night. Oh, Anki, you're getting married is just an idle dream. Nothing very idle about the one I had. <laughs> What's this about getting married, Unc? Huh? Yeah? I thought we were just getting a rumor. Well, my boy, there's nothing like killing two birds. Yeah, but getting married, that makes you the pigeon. Leroy. <laughs> I'll see you tonight around 8, Catherine. Just thought I'd give you a buzz from the office while Bessie is out for a malt. <laughs> Been thinking about you quite a bit over the weekend. Mm-hmm. I got something important to talk to you about. Now, I'll tell you tonight. And make it 7.30, huh? Goodbye. Ta-ta. Is the water commissioner in? Oh, hello, Judge. Who'd you have on the phone, Gildy? Oh, for... I was just talking to one of our better customers, Judge. Uh-huh. That's the way you talk to all your customers? Goodbye, ta-ta. <laughs> Nosy old goat. Judge, someday you're going to get your chin whiskers caught in a keyhole. Now, now, Gilda. How are Leroy and Marjorie? Fine, fine. And how are the plans for the wedding? Well, I haven't proposed yet. I mean... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you mean Marjorie's wedding. <laughs> What's this, my friend? Uh, nothing, Judge. Is the custodian of the reservoir going to jump off the deep end? <laughs> deep end? Judge, there's nothing wrong with getting married. Why, of course not. I think you and Miss Milford would make a handsome couple. My blessings on you both. Now, wait a minute. Let's not play the wedding march yet. I haven't made up my mind. What does your mind have to do with it, Gildy? What? What's the woman who decides to get married? Then all she has to do is make the man think that it's his idea. Oh, is that so? I don't blame her for wanting to exchange her nurse's cap for a big fat meal ticket. Watch it, Hooker. And don't speak so disparagingly of marriage. Well, I don't mean it that way, Gildy. In fact, I'd like to perform your ceremony free of charge. You would? Yes, sir. You'll need the money more than I will. <laughs> <laughs> Nice evening. 
think I'll stop at Peavy's and pick up a box of candy. I'm not going to let what the judge said influence me a bit. He's just sour because he doesn't have a wife to support. Hello, PV. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this evening? I'd like a little candy, PV. Very well. We just opened a carton of assorted gumdrops. Yeah, gumdrops? This is for a lady, PV. Well, Mrs. PV is a lady, and she eats gumdrops all the time. <laughs> Delighted to hear it, PV. The gummier, the better. Yeah. <laughs> PV, let's drop the gumdrops. What a nice box of chocolates. Oh. Courting candy. <laughs> well, that's the idea. By the way, how is Miss Milford? Fine, Peavy. In fact, I think she's very fine. Well, that's fine. <clears throat> Peavy, you're an old friend of mine. What would you say if I told you I'm thinking of getting married? No, I wouldn't know what to say. <laughs> Marriage is in the air, Peavy. No, I hadn't noticed. Marjorie and Bronco are getting married in May. I thought Catherine and I might make it a double wedding. My, my... <laughs> What do you think of my idea? Was it yours? Why, certainly. Well, I never give advice about marriage, but my father used to say, when a man thinks of getting married, he should stop, look, and listen. Peavy, getting married isn't like crossing a railroad track. Mm, I don't know. If more men had stopped and looked, they wouldn't be listening so much today. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Peavy, you talk like Judge Hooker. Oh? What did the judge have to say on the subject? Well, he seemed to think I was falling into a trap. Well, I don't feel that way. You didn't feel that way, did you, Peavy? No, I didn't suspect a thing. <laughs> what? I went into the parlor one night with a box of candy. I noticed the lamp was low and smelled some incense burning. Go on, Peavy. That's all I remember. <laughs> well, Peavy, I don't have to worry. There's nobody out to trap me. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, Hooker and Peavy are all wrong about this. That sweet little Catherine wouldn't set a trap for me. She's a registered nurse. That would be unethical. <laughs> Kiki -ki Katie, beautiful Katie. Hmm, that's pretty. <laughs> Wonder why she doesn't answer the door. Is that you, Throckmorton? Where are you? Oh, hello, Catherine. Yeah, it's me. I mean, I. Mother and I are upstairs. The door's open. Just walk in. All right. I'll be dressed in a minute. I'll be waiting on the love seat. Kiki <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Kiki Katie. Beautiful. Uh, uh, uh. What's that? <laughs> Incense. <laughs> Look at the lamps. They're turned down low. With pink bulbs. <laughs> Catherine never turned the lights down before. She likes it light, like an operating room. <laughs> What's this? A book of Portuguese love sonnets. Mm-hmm. A man trap if I ever saw one. Imagine Catherine setting a snare for me. Oh, I'm getting out of here. I'll just sneak right out. Stop, Martin. Yeah, hello, <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> Where are you going? Uh, going? Oh, I'm going out to get a drink of water. Outside? Well, I'm the water commissioner, you know. I always carry a canteen in the car. <laughs> oh, don't be silly. I'll get you a cool drink from the kitchen. No thanks. No favors. Throckmorton, why are you behaving so strangely tonight? Me? Come here. I want to talk to you. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Let's sit here on the love seats. Uh-uh. What? I'll sit over here by the window. A little stuffy in here with that incense burning. Oh, oh, well, that's what I want to talk to you about. Yeah, well, I'm listening. I'm stopping and looking, too. <laughs> Throckmorton, I don't know how to ask you this, but, well, uh, after a woman reaches a certain age, do you think she's justified in taking the initiative? Initiative? You mean... Toward marriage. That's what I thought you meant. 
Mother seems to think it entirely proper, but I'm not so sure. How do you feel? I feel sick. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, let's get out of here and go to a movie. I can't stand that horrible incense either. You can't? But didn't you set the trap? I mean, light the incense? <laughs> of course not. Mother did. She did? Well, that's what I was trying to tell you. She simply adores this Mr. Oberdorf. Oh, yes, Mr. O Oberdorf. Well, a friend from Idaho. Whom did you think I was talking about? Frankly, I didn't have the vaguest idea. <laughs> Come on, Catherine. Let's stoke up the incense burner and leave. Oh, huh? Throckmorton. I'll blow on it. <laughs> Look at it smoke now. What a sneaky thing to do to Mr. Oberdorf. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again very shortly. Don't forget, Parquet Margarine is all ready to mail you the handiest kitchen implement you ever used. Gildy's Blade, that wonderful double-edged knife spatula that you can have for only 50 cents in the red end flap of a package of Parquet Margarine, plus the label or wrapper of any loaf of bread you buy at your grocer's. In some states, remember, instead of the red end flap, you may have to use the side panel from the new Parquet carton that shows the four yellow quarters. Send your half dollar, your parquet red end flap or side panel, and your bread label or wrapper to Kraft Foods Company, Box 5939, Chicago 77, Illinois. That's Kraft Foods Company, Box 5939, Chicago 77, Illinois. Include your own name and address. Send for your Gildy's Blade tomorrow. <laughs> This is your old friend, the Water Commissioner, again. You know, folks, this week marks the 38th anniversary of the Girl Scouts and the 40th anniversary of the Campfire Girls, two fine, worthy organizations. Here's wishing them both many happy returns of the day. Hello, girls. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tedley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Kathy Lewis, Dick Crenna, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Good night, John. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Which suits your taste? Mustard that's mild, delicately spiced, or sharp, snappy mustard with zing in every bite? Either way, you like Kraft prepared mustard, for there are two kinds. Salad mustard, tangy but smooth, and Kraft prepared mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand for different tastes, different uses. Either works magic in bringing out hidden flavor, or when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft prepared mustard. Have you heard the new Break the Bank? It's next on NBC.